Manazil, which literally means the most auspicious of houses. Uh, we get the name and the date for this and who built this building from the inscription you see in the, uh, just above the central arch. Can you see there's a bit of a writing framed yeah. in a rectangular border, red rectangular border up there. So that's the inscription in Persian which gives us two names. One is that of Akbar, the Mughal Emperor, Akbar, and that of his wet nurse, Maham Anga. The inscription tells us that Maham Anga built this uh, mosque, called it Kherul Manazil, and it was built during the time of Akbar's reign. Now, this bit of history almost everybody here would be familiar with. Akbar is one of the good guys in Indian history. We, we all love him. Yeah? <laughs> he's secular and he's, he's married Hindu women and he's he seems to be romantic also going by Bollywood movies. He's good looking also in Bollywood movies, yeah. You can't do better than... Yeah, he, he's not... I mean, you can't do better than Hrithik Roshan, can you? <laughs> so, he, he's very, very good. And he managed a very long reign, a very stable one. Set up many... Uh, he put down many administrative bureaucracy, um, bureaucratic measures which were carried on by his uh, successors. So he, he's somebody we all like very much. Yeah, he's an he's an ideal king. And Mahamanga was his wet nurse. Wet nurses are are those who feed the baby when the mother cannot, or even in the presence of the mother. Wet nurse. Okay. Yeah. W E T. Wet nurse. Okay. Yeah. So Mahamanga is one of his wet nurses, and she is very very powerful. All because of the fact that she's a wet nurse, this is not a relationship of a king and uh, somebody who's his worker, somebody who's a slave, an employee. Yeah, this is a very very close relationship, almost like family, an extended family. Yeah, so it's a very very closely bound relationship. And Akbar, you'll also know, came to throne when he was still a teenager, very very young. So around that time, when he was on throne, the first few years of his reign. Don't do that in my walk. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't do that. He's been coming in my walks uh, even before he was born. Yeah? yeah. So he really shouldn't do that. <laughs> okay. So Mahamanga, uh, when, sorry, when Akbar was still very young and was the king, there were, you could say, people powerful in the court who acted as his guardians. And one such person was Mahamanga. She's considered a very, very powerful influence on not only Akbar but also the running of the empire <coughs> and those of you who have been part of our Mehroli walks both Mehroli archaeological <coughs> park and the Mehroli village would remember two names uh, one was Muhammad Kuli Khan whose tomb is in Mehroli archaeological park which was converted into a house by Thomas Metcalf and the other is Adam Khan's tomb in Mehroli village which is also known as Ghul Bulaiya. So both Mah um, Muhammad Kuli Khan and Adam Khan are sons of Mahamanga. So you can see that uh, it's, a, it's a close family and it's, uh, there are plenty of monuments around this family in Delhi. And Mahamanga, is, uh, this place is also significant because this is patronized or built by a person who's a woman. There are not many instances of patronage of architecture, or at least not the surviving ones, which are by women. Yeah, you don't find, overwhelmingly you talk of Akbar, you talk of Humayu, you talk of Shah Jahan, but rarely do we talk of women patronizing uh, mosques or buildings or palaces, but there were, and this is one such example. Uh, the inscription there also gives us three more names. I only remember one of those, so I'll discuss only that. Shihabuddin Ahmad Khan. The inscription says that Maham Beg built this mosque uh, during the reign of Mughal Emperor Akbar and with the assistance of someone called Shehabuddin Ahmad Khan. Now Shehabuddin Ahmad Khan is a relative and also a friend of Maham Anga. And he is also the governor of Delhi area when Akbar is in power. The first, the original um, few years of Akbar's rule as emperor, the, this guy is in control in this area, in the Delhi region, and he helps Mahamanga build this mosque, and this is acknowledged in the inscription up there. Another reference to Shihabuti Ahmad Khan is to do with what you today know as Chandni Chaur. 
again going back to what we have discussed in our walks you might remember that we whenever we talk of Firoz Shah Tughlaq a king from the 14th century Tughlaq dynasty Firoz Shah was responsible for uh, creating a very very extensive canal network and much of it was built upon by subsequent rulers and even in modern India a lot of canal network in Delhi, Punjab, Haryana region is an extension of what Firoz Shah did way back in 14th century. So one of Firoz Shah's canals was repaired by Shihabuddin Ahmad Khan and named after himself Neher e Shihab. Neher is canal, Shihab from his own name. So Neher e Shihab or Shihab's Neher. And this Neher itself was the one which was extended later during Shah Jahan's time in the 17th century and brought into the, the canal which ran through Chandni Chowk. Yeah, the stream which was through Chandni Chowk. So Shehabuddin is the missing link between Feroz Shah's Meher and Shah Jahan's Meher in Delhi. Yeah. So this fellow was obviously quite significant here. Um, let's, this is an active mo mosque also but you are free to explore it. If you are going inside the prayer hall, we will have to take off our shoes. So are you all okay with that? Yeah. So come, let's take off our shoes and walk in. It is said that it is from the wall, from the parapet of this very madrasa that the pot shot was taken at him. So somebody shot an arrow planning to kill Akbar but it, did, it only grazed his arm and did not, it was not fatally injurious and somebody else died and of course the attacker was captured and put to death as he should have been. <laughs> yeah. So it's from this side it is said, from Kher, the walls of Kherul Manazil that this attack was made. You said Kherul is the most sacred place. Kher is auspicious or best and Manazil is the plural of Manzil. Oh. Yeah. So Manzil is a house or a building and Manazil would be the plural. Yeah. So Kher or Manazil the most auspicious of houses. This name is also a chronogram which means that if you substitute um, substitute each alphabet for a numeric value mm -hmm. and you add all the alphabets in the in the word the sum is the date of the building oh, okay. yeah. now I don't know how that works but that's what the internet says <laughs> <laughs> why is this pink why are the walls pink like has it been renovated or? yeah um, they're not supposed to be pink at least I think they're not supposed to be this pink uh, this is restoration work and uh, I think it's a little badly done or it's probably incomplete. So whenever you do um, restoration work, you add brick aggregate, surki uh, and lime, which is tuna, which is white in color. So brick aggregate is red in color and lime being white, a combination of these two gives you something like this. So mostly newly worked upon buildings start looking pink in color. <laughs> quite ghastly but apparently that was that's the idea so the idea is that you plaster it over and the white plaster was the original color of the building 
So we like to see our buildings all moldy and black and grey, but apparently that's not the idea. Yeah? When these were in use, they would have been brightly coloured and probably even painted over some areas. In this particular building, you see um, the carvings you see, these are carvings on plaster and a combination of tile work over there. And they are original? Yes. The writing bit would be verses from the Quran. Uh, no, there is a sort of a cement here. You know what you do is these walls are made of stone. Yeah, this is not brick architecture. So you 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 have big pieces of stone, you break them down into uneven pieces and you put them together using mortar or what we today call cement, the binding material for all these stones. And this mortar is something which, is, which, which historians believe came up only in the medieval period, yeah, the time when we are discussing, the time we are discussing these monuments about. Yeah. So the black bit between the stones you see, that's evidence of the mortar. And that mortar is also cleaned up and renovated again and again when you do conservation work because the mortar withers away. After a point of time, these buildings are like centuries old, hundreds of years old. So over time, this binding material grows weaker. So think of it as fevicol, which you have to use again and again. Yeah. Uh, have to renew it. We only started from there, so that boat wall and all. That's built by Shersha or by Humayun? Uh, the fortifications are considered to be what remains of Humayun's time. And when Shersha comes along, there are references that he destroyed everything that was um, that Humayun had built as part of his capital city and created new buildings on the same site. So, the general consensus acceptability at the moment is that the walls probably go and the gateways probably go back to Humayun's time, but the buildings which exist inside, and there aren't many, two main buildings, uh, one is a mosque, the other is a pavilion, a double storied pavilion, they are probably during Shersha's time. They are both named after Shersha as well. That's the general consensus. Come. Uh, this mosque was built during Akbar's time. The date is 1862. Yes, but early days of architecture, especially um, till Jahangir's time, yeah, you easily find tile work. Yeah, easily. Uh, this is also an active mosque. And there has been some tiff between something called Masjid Basau Committee and the Archaeological Survey of India. Apparently in the year 1992, the ASI decided that they wouldn't permit namaz here. I don't know what was the original status way back in the 19th century or early 20th century, but there is a specific case in 1992 where the Archaeological Survey of India made a deliberate attempt to stop namaz here. And the, the, the committee, the group which opposed this took it to the court and I don't think it has been resolved so far. And what are these things called? The, uh, this red thing? The things jutting out where yeah, the pigeons yeah, yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. have called? These are called brackets and they support chajjas, eaves. So slanting slabs so of stone. there would have been chajjas here? Yeah, there would have been chajjas above them. These were supports for the chajjah. Covers. Yeah. Yes. Against the sun. Against the sun, yes. That was the hard side. That is the western, yes. That's the western wall.